The chant just now was for Saharlat's father, who passed away just a few days ago. It's a chant that's chanted at all funerals in Thailand, all funerals in the Theravada world, pointing out the fact that whatever is fabricated, whatever is put together through intentions, arises and then passes away. It's inevitable. Everyone here in the room is going to die someday. As soon as you're born, that's what it's, another death is going to happen. These things all come together. We like birth, but we don't like death. You can't have one without the other. So the whole purpose of our, our practice is to find something that doesn't take birth and doesn't die. There is that thing the Buddha said. It's called the deathless. And we meditate to train our minds to, f to find that, because otherwise we just keep on constructing new births and there are going to be new deaths. This happens all over the world. You probably know the story of the, the woman whose child had died. And she went for her, to various doctors to see if there could be some way to fix the child. She refused to admit that it was dead. Finally, she went to the Buddha, and the Buddha said, well, there would be medicine for this, but you have to get the medicine. It was just something very cheap. It was mustard seeds. But you have to get it from a family where there's nobody that ever has died. And so she goes from family to family and asks for the mustard seed. Of course, everyone's willing to give it to her. But then she places the condition, oh, has anyone ever died in this family? And it turns out every family, everywhere she goes, people have died. And finally hits her, okay, this is something that's inescapable. And so we have to learn how to train our minds so that we can not suffer from the inescapable. So until we find the deathless, we have to learn how to just, as they say in, in Thailand, make your mind or shape your mind in the right direction. You're realizing that this is something that's going to happen, so you, you have to live your life in the light of death, knowing that this is going to happen. And ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish in the time I have left? You don't know how much time you have left. But you do know that you have this moment, and you have more than this moment. Okay, you try to do your best, because what do we have to take when we go? We just have nothing but our actions. The good and the bad that we've done will follow us, as the Buddha said, that they're like a shadow. The good is like a shadow. It follows and it's weightless. The bad that we've done follows us like a cart that crushes all the, all the footprints we try to leave behind. In other words, all the good we try to do, if we mix it up with a lot of unskillful things, the unskillful things are going to crush the good things. So we're trying to do only good things. That's the beginning of the Buddha's teachings, avoiding all unskillful things and doing all that's skillful. Whatever is skillful in terms of generosity, virtue, meditation, training the mind that you can do, do it as quickly as you can. And keep that foremost in your, as you go through the day. Remember that we're here on a journey that we hope will lead to awakening. So whatever you do at work, whatever you do at home, try to do it in the light of the fact that you want it to lead to awakening. What perfections you can develop, go ahead and develop them now, because you've got the chance. The Dharma is still alive. The opportunity to practice is still here. Society is in relative peace, so it's possible to practice. So take advantage of the opportunity that you have now. As for the people who have passed away, we dedicate our merit to them. In other words, we send a current of the mind. If the mind is so sorrowful, depressed, the current that's coming out of the mind is not a really good one. You want to, This is why we do good things to commemorate somebody's death, so the mind will have a good energy to send to the person who's passed away. That way we look after our own benefit and the benefit of those that we love. So always keep the practice uppermost. And remember that the Buddha has you think about death at least at least twice a day, and more often if possible, if possible, so you can keep your priorities straight. So that when the inevitable happens, it's not strange. The chant we have in Thai says death is normal. A birth is normal, aging is normal, illness and death, these are all normal things. And we have to learn how to keep our minds normal in the midst of these things. In other words, Learn how not to suffer even when the pain is intense. Because there's a part of the mind that doesn't have to suffer, and that's the part we're trying to find. <laughs>